Now we're going to look at our last mechanization of defense in the atmosphere. We've already looked at how nitrogen and oxygen protects us from the very high dangerous forms of radiation, X-rays, gamma rays, and shortwave UV radiation. Now we're also going to look and see how oxygen in the ozone form now protects us from the remainder of the ultraviolet radiation coming from space. Now in the last video we showed that the enthalpy of formation for, for uh, ozone or O3 molecules was 107.2 kilojoules per mole and it's an exothermic reaction meaning it gives off that energy which means that now if we have an O3 molecule in the atmosphere it is now able to absorb a photon a quantum of energy equal to H times the frequency and then turn that back into an oxygen molecule and an oxygen atom in the gas state like that. Now that requires an input of energy because it's an endothermic reaction so it requires energy. How much energy? Energy equivalent to, to this much or more in order to or at least yeah per mole so it requires this much energy per mole in order for, for that reaction to take place. Now the question is how much is that per molecule? That way we can also calculate what kind of uh, what kind of photon is able to be absorbed by the ozone molecules. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the energy per mole and convert that to energy per molecule. So the energy for one ozone molecule separation, for the, for the dissociation of an O3 molecule, that is going to take 107.2 kilojoules per mole. And if we divide that by the number of molecules per mole, which is Avogadro's number, times 10 to the 23 per mole. Then we have the energy per molecule, and let's see what that is equal to. So we have 107,200 divided by 6.02 e to the 23rd, and that gives us 1.78, 1.78 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So what kind of photon is that? What kind of photon will allow an, an ozone molecule to be dissociated? All right, let's try to figure that out by calculating its wavelength. So that the energy of a photon is equal to the Planck's constant times the frequency, which is equal to hc over lambda, keeping in mind, of course, that the frequency times the wavelength equals the speed of light. So that means that the frequency can be written as the speed of light divided by lambda, which is what we did over here. There should be a lambda symbol. There we go, the wavelength. That means that we can find out the wavelength to be equal to hc over the energy of the photon, which we just calculated right here. This is the energy for a single photon that an ozone molecule can absorb. So this is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. That's joules times seconds. Multiply times the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And divide the whole thing by the energy of a single molecule, which is 1.78 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So let's find out. Let's take the inverse of that. Multiply it times 6.626 e to the 34 minus times 3 e to the 8 equals. And it looks like hmm, it's a molecule equal to 1,116 1, nanometers, which is equal to 1,116 uh, 1, times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Now that's not a very energetic molecule or I should say photon because visible light has wavelengths so for light light has wavelengths for 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers so what that means is that any molecule coming in from space that has an energy uh, and a wavelength that is greater or I should say shorter than 1100, let's just round it off to about 1100 nanometers, that will then absorb, be absorbed by the ozone layer and then dissociate itself and absorb that energy. Now, that means it can absorb visible light and so forth, but the ones that are most likely to go ahead and break up an ozone molecule is of course the highest energy molecules that are there, or photons that are there. I keep saying molecule, but I really mean photon, which means that these other photons right here and maybe I can use a different color. Do I have red? Yes, I'll use red. So that means that these photons coming in from space will then be absorbed by the ozone molecule and re, uh, break them up and turn them back into oxygen gas, diatomic gas, and oxygen atoms like this. 
So this is taken over or absorbed by the O3 molecules. Bottom line, the protection of the atmosphere is given to us by these three molecules. Nitrogen will absorb the very high energy radiation of X-rays and gamma rays and the very short wave radiation of UV. Oxygen molecules, being diatomic, will also be able to absorb some of the UVC radiation, any, anything down to 240 nanometers. So any photons that are 240 nanometers or shorter, they can be absorbed by oxygen as well. But the rest would make it through unless we had something else like an oxygen-3 molecule or an ozone molecule, because that molecule is able to, to absorb radiation all the way up to 1100 nanometers. Now, what typically will happen is the, the highest energy between the 240 nanometers and the 1100 nanometers are the ones that are going to be absorbed by the ozone, the O3 molecules. And so the vast majority of UVB and most of UVA will be absorbed before it makes it all the way to the atmosphere. Not all of the UVA is unfortunately absorbed by ozone. A little bit of it gets through and that's why you go out in the sun in the summer and you expose your skin to the sunlight, you will still get burned by a small amount of UVA radiation that did not get absorbed by the breakup of the ozone. But nevertheless, the fact that we have ozone in the atmosphere, especially way up high in the, tropos in the uh, stratosphere, all the high energy UV radiation coming in will either be absorbed by oxygen or, pre or predominantly from the ozone molecules. And that's how that works.